You know it's a hatch match, but I haven't figured anything out beyond that yet. Let's dust off the old book, shall we? Now, I'll be the first to admit that this is an older publication. In fact, it might be a library buyback, which I like doing because not only does it help promote and continue on the library services in my community, but it also provides really good resource. Now, unfortunately, this particular book, while it is packed full of knowledge, is all artist illustrated, so there's no, there's no color pretty pictures. But that's okay, because when we figure out what fish we're going to do, then I can find a color picture of it. In fact, was I even here when this book was printed? Uh, it's debatable. <laughs> um, it's pretty old. It's, I wouldn't say dirt old, but it's old. Second printing, 78. So this has been around a while, but I want to go back to the minnows because that is really, really cool. There's a lot of good information in here, and I really, really am excited about finding something. So most of the time when I'm doing these type of hatch matches, I'm getting your opinions. Like this time was a poll of what you guys wanted to see, and I gave you four choices. This ultimately was like a landslide. So 49%, almost half of you on on. Um, on my YouTube channel voted for Hatch Match and all of you pretty much in um, in Facebook and other formats, Twitter and Instagram voted for it. So Hatch Match it is, but I wanted to stay native to the Ozarks because that's where I live. Um, so as we go into this, the first thing that came to mind was the one of the only color pictures on the book, which is that red belly dace. But I've already done one of those on a spray session, so it's not going to be that one. The other thing that I was thinking about was this gold shiner. Um, very similar pug nose minnow, but I think the golden shiner, if I can find a different photograph of this guy right here. It might be simple, but there's probably some subtleties in it that we can work through together. So let's take a look at the Golden Shiner and then let's read a little bit about it. Um, again, no color pictures. I wonder if we could even do this without looking at a colored picture and then look at a colored picture at the end and see how close we get. So the colors described here. That's a great challenge. Let's do that. Let's not use a picture at all and just go from what this says. Back greenish olive with a faint dusky stripe along the midline. Sides golden or silvery. Belly is silvery white. Fins without definite markings. Young individuals from clear waters have a definite dusky stripe along the midside, which would be their lateral line. So on the Golden Shiners, the adults are three to six inches, maximum eight. Say that with me five times fast. Natimagonus, angled back. Chrysalucius, Greek meaning gold and white in reference to the body color. Cool. Hey, so one more thing that I think is important. A Michigan study indicates that the golden shiner attains a length of about three inches during its second summer, four inches during its third. So we're going to keep it small. We're going to we're going to go like first, second year, which is also something else you guys have been asking for, and that's to do a very small minnow. So let's see what I can find in my box of blanks and let's get to it. Let's see what we got down here. Dinger stuff. These are all samples that I got. And I think that there's some tiny stuff in here as well. Okay, I think I can work with this. two to three inches. So third inch in their second year. So we're looking at, this is a two inch bait. I think maybe a sepia. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit this with white. We're going over this together by the way. I'm making this up as I go along. I'm gonna do white. I'm gonna start out with white and then I'm gonna hit it with sepia and then we'll add our netting scales over top of that and do our colors. 
That's how we're going to do it. Didn't put a whole lot of white in that chamber there. Sepia. Okay, so we're not going to go black or detail magenta. We're going to add just a little bit of sepia. And then we'll net over that. Which I think is going to make it more natural than if I were to do black or black magenta. That'll do. I always try and, well, normally what I do is I try and bring this through, but this is so thin, I don't want to damage this back end of it. I don't want to rip it. So I think we'll just go ahead and push this around like that. See if we can clamp, sort of, I should probably do a second one find a thinner one of these. There we go. So while I'm doing this stuff, hopefully you guys are taking care. I'm sure some of you guys are coming out of your skin right now wanting to get on the water. Hopefully it will be soon and we can all go back to our normal lives. In the meantime, one breath at a time, folks. One breath at a time. Let's add some white back into this. We want to bring our pressure way, 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 way down. And I'm going to be using 10 to 12. A lot of you guys also ask, do I reduce my paint at 10 to 12? No, I just keep my airbrush really, really clean. Because that's pretty much 9 times out of 10 what the problem is with poor flow. Not progressive flow pour liquid flow coming out of this. So we're just going to get this in as tight as we can to these little clips and not overkill that. Don't want too much paint. We would immediately want to heat set that. And we're heat setting it because we don't want that paint to seep underneath this real thin net netting. I'm going to hit it with some pearlized copper. And then I'm going to come back with like a, a pearl white or a pearl silver because the copper is a little bit darker, but it's a really good color for gold shiners. Gold is actually, or at least the pearlized gold that Createx and Wicked puts out is almost too light for this because remember we're going to be blending in some olive. And then we're going to hit the whole thing with that pearl white. So after each color on this one, we are going to heat set it because we don't want that bleed through. I'm leaving my gold in the chamber because I want to mix in just a little bit pearl lime. Just a tiny bit. Now this is a tiny bait, so we don't need to kill it with the paint. But I want this back to start showing a little bit of green pretty much it. Get rid of the rest of this. This is a blend of olive green. Basically it's a tropical green mixed with gray, burnt sienna, a couple of drops of white, and a little medium brown. It's a pretty decent olive color. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera or if it's actually even in the proper hue. So we're going to blend this down onto the face a little bit and we're just going to kind of randomize and not go completely crazy because it's only across that back. I did add just a tiny bit of detail black magenta. 
we're just going to kind of slowly, real low pressure, come down the sides and just kind of accent this netting just a little bit. Not too, too much. And now we're going to heat set the bejesus out of it. I added an illustration white. It's just a Createx super thin illustration base white. And that is what we're going to put just a tiny bit of on the belly. Both sides. And then we're going to get that out of there. And before we heat set this color, I'm going to add some pearl white over all of it. And I'm actually even contemplating whether or not I want to do a pearl white or this hint here. I think I might do just a little bit of this Com Art, just a pearlescence. And what this does is it just drops tons of glitter onto it. Pearls it up real good. That's it. Stuff like this though, it's a little stickier, a little tackier. And you just want to make sure as soon as you're done using that, you put some cleaner in your chamber. I think the very last thing I want to do is come in with a little bit of accent. Just trying to figure out what kind of accent I want. I think I want some burnt sienna. Just a tiny bit. And the reason I want that is just to get a little bit of extra shading on the side. I know there's not much real estate there to play with, but just some controlled bursts. Not much at all. See? See that splatter? That's why you always shoot that on paper first and not onto your bait. It's a little bit there. A little bit there. It can be randomized. Okay. I think I'm alright with that. Pretty excited to see how this turned out. Our big reveal as we peel this back shows us what's it going to show us. It, if it tacks down real hard and you're having difficulties, I always pull the sides out first and then I just stretch it from underneath. And generally it won't stick as badly. That's not bad. Bring these helping hands back. This is the pros kit. It's a soldering aid, soldering tool, but it works really, really well for this. Some of them come with magnifiers, some of them do not. This is listed in the, the description below if you guys want a link to get these. You guys know what's coming next, right? Right. So this is tiny real estate, which calls for tiny pectoral fin. small size and then around that I'm just going to cut in it doesn't have to be perfect all I'm looking to do is have enough so that I can come around and do the gill plate I'm about ready for a new knife blade here. Make sure that still looks decent. And that is going to be just fine. Okay. 
So we're not going to go super crazy on the accents either. We're going to stick to what we know. I'm going to use the black magenta because it's a much more natural. Clean your chamber, Jen. It's a much more natural color. And it's a lot more muted than black. So it'll look like shading and not department store lures. in this color will take over see what I mean always 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 see that splatter you don't want that on your bait so the first thing we're gonna do is this gill plate wipe that down And bring that second one in. Shoot, it's got a third. We can do it. Sure we can. Flip the bait over. Which means flipping this over. Because we want to do the same. Now on this, because I'm coming at it at a weird angle, I'm going to do my little trick here and put these alligator clips on it. Let's see. Come to it like that so that you guys can all see what I'm doing. And then the second one and this one by the eye. May not look like much in the camera, but I promise you it's gonna make all the difference in a hatch match to these little fish. Do a little bit more on this one. Okay, now I'm gonna get real tight in on this. eyes a little bit darker the sockets because that's going to support that light gold eye and with this let's see here we're going to run it here's how to do it when you're doing your pectoral fin and you kind of want to eyeball it you don't want to spend a whole lot of time with it run it right over the eyelet right over top the eyelet take your the very back where the end of the fin is going to be and line that up and then do the same thing on the other side flip it set that against that line it up with that eyelet Now we have that little pectoral fin on both sides. This should do it. Just a tiny drop. Don't need more than that because it's a tiny bait. Yep, that's the right size. Hope I got the eye color right. I'm, I was thinking either gold or silver, but we're going with gold. And hopefully I didn't mess that up. You know, we can. We can add, I know you guys are asking that. See how the shading did there on the gill plate? That lateral line, we can certainly add that in. But if we add it in, it's going to be super duper light. Yes, this is a number two graphite pencil. 
I've never done it before, so I'm testing this theory with you guys. We're gonna see how it does. That adds just the, the slightest subtle dusky line on their lateral line. And I don't think, of course I don't know, how this KBS is gonna respond to it. I'm thinking because it's not ink that it won't run. So all I'm doing is I'm just tracing about midway down in a little arc. So that's what we've done. That's what, well, we. Hopefully you guys are playing along with me. That's how I solved that riddle. We're gonna find out what KBS does with it. That's gonna be interesting to see if it reacts to a graphite pencil. I've never tried before, so it's either gonna be great or it's gonna suck. But we will have done it together. I might just, just the slightest bit darker on this side, just for that lateral line. But that's what we did. I think it's time to find a picture. Let's see how we did. I typed in Missouri Golden Shiner. Let's see how we did. I'll take it. Daggum, I'll take it. Dip that down in. And dip to dee doo da. I hope that I've been able to teach you guys a few things today. I hope that we've had fun together and I hope you guys try and make this pattern. I'd love to see what you guys do with it. I'm excited about it. It's uh, the first really tiny bait I think that I've made on camera, on screen. I am excited to see what's gonna happen with the graphite. I'm gonna go look at it here in a second because I kinda need to give that stuff a chance to get groovy on the bait. Let me put this up while we're waiting for that and I want to see how it did. Let's see if the graphite is going to hold up on this KBS for that lateral line and yes folks it is. Don't know if I can get real close on this but that lateral line is doing real well. It's not bleeding out. Good. That's exactly what we want. You guys take care. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates.